Hey guys, Happy Conscious Girl here. Oh my god, it's been ages since I've done a vlog. I don't know, maybe 10 days. It has been the craziest 10 days I've ever had, probably in my life. Um, the last time I saw you guys, I was in my apartment in Melbourne, surrounded by a million boxes. Today I'm actually on the road, on the way up to our new home in Byron, Byron Shire in Australia, and sort of no, sort of more north from where I normally live, much more closer to the sun. And um, I'm half asleep, so forgive me for if I'm a bit vague, but you can see this sort of green behind me. I'm actually staying, we're staying overnight um, at some guy's place that we rented through Airbnb. So um, we just, you know, I don't know if any of you have ever used Airbnb. It's amazing. You just go onto that website, airbnb.com. And you can rent rooms in people's places. It's much cheaper than a hotel and much nicer. But the first night on the road, we stayed in a horrible little cheap motel, which was really yuck. And last night, we stayed in this guy's house. And this is his backyard where I'm doing my vlog. And he's very friendly. And it's been really, really nice and helped us relax. So it has been an incredibly stressful 10 days. Um, obviously, I'm doing the vlog because of HCG. So I just want to start by reporting on that, that it's really been challenging for me to stick with phase three during this crazy period because basically what's happened is about halfway through my phase three we found out that our house swap in Byron had fallen through which meant we had to rent somewhere in Byron which meant we had to rent out my place in Melbourne which gave us about 10 days after we, we, we so we found a place in Byron and then we realized we had to rent our place in Melbourne so that gave us about 10 days to get the house ready to be rented, including packing all our stuff up for Byron, which is, I've been in that house for 14 years, so it had a lot of stuff in it. Decluttering, going through which things we want to take up to Byron, which things we want to put in storage at my parents' house, which things I want to get rid of or sell or give away. So that's a process that usually takes weeks. I had 10 days to do that. And also we had to clean out the entire house so it could be rented and we had to renovate the house. We actually had to do a lot of handiwork and fix a lot of things around the house. Um, in that 10 days, plus we had to write ads to advertise the house, we had to show people around the house, um, and we had to get everything organized for both of our lives to tie everything up in Melbourne, as well as get everything ready for our new lives in Byron in terms of our businesses and stuff. So it was just mental. It took the days off work, obviously, and didn't see any clients or anything. And just we literally were waking up at 8 a.m., going to sleep about 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. every single day, and just working all day with no breaks, packing, packing, packing. Plus, I had to fit in seeing people to say goodbye. Everyone wanted to say goodbye. I threw a goodbye party, hoping I could put everyone into one day. But, of course, a lot of people couldn't make that. So I had to have separate brunches and separate lunches. And that wasn't a chore. I mean, these are all people I love and I really wanted to see. But just trying to fit that in with everything else was ridiculous. So basically, what got dropped out was sleeping, exercising, looking after my body, you know, my relationship, <laughs> um, food. It just, there was just no time for anything like that. It was just like work, 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 pack, pack. So what would happen is I would pack up an area of the house. I would pack up, say, a cupboard or part of my bedroom or my office. And once that area was clear, Alan would clean it and do any renovations that were needed. And while we, I wrote the ad for the house, and then he was negotiating with the people coming, and then we showed tenants in. It was just a real teamwork, and it really showed me how he and I function incredibly well as a team. Because we got done in... 10 days what would take most people four weeks so it all came off well in the end but I mean the last two nights I was up all night I just didn't even go to bed on the final night I was up till 6 a.m. I made Alan go to bed at 10 p.m. because he had to drive the next day for all day but I just stayed up and finished everything off till 6 a.m. a friend came around and she helped me till about 2 a.m. and then I just finished it off 6 a.m. finished everything went to bed got about two hours sleep got up and kept going Anyway, so we finally got out of there on Saturday about 5 p.m., got on the road, drove until 2 a.m. for our first stop because it was about an eight or nine hour drive, the first leg. We left much later than we thought because there was a lot to finish on the last day. Um, stayed that night in a hotel and then yesterday drove all day, all day, all day, all day and got at this place about 9 p.m. last night and actually have had a decent sleep last night. So last night's the first proper sleep I've had in about 11, 12 days now. 
So that's the background. So what has been the impact of that on phase three? Well, this is very bad timing for this to have suddenly come out of the blue because on phase three, you really need to be stabilizing and your life needs to be stable. <laughs> you need to be able to eat P3 foods, which are very low carb foods, very strictly. And so previously when I was on phase three, I was very organized. You know, I always knew what I was going to eat. I would cook an omelet in the morning and cut it up and maybe eat it as a snack during the day. And if I was going to dinners or breakfast, I'd research the restaurants first to make sure I chose ones that had fish. And I'd call the restaurant in advance and ask them to make no sugar, put no sugar on everything, you know. If I was going to a friend's house, I'd take a few berries with me or, you know, something I could eat, a boiled egg or something. Anyway, so how I've been so calm in HCG is I've always been very prepared. And so you guys know that on phase two, I went camping for six days and didn't mess anything up because I took all my foods with me. I pre-cooked them. But normally on a road trip like this, I would have it all cooked and packed and frozen and ready, you know, and I would have had all snack foods ready to snack on while I was cleaning. But because this all happened so quickly and out of the blue and was so urgent, I had to get done just from 8 a.m. to 4 a.m. There was no time for breaks. I had no time to prepare foods. I had no time to cook meals. I had no time to pre-make anything, freeze it. I had no time to go and buy P3 foods. I had no time to put them in the fridge. I just had no time. So it was kind of stressful because I just felt out of control because I couldn't control my foods. And I actually am at the point in HCG where I don't want to be controlling my foods anymore. Like once I'm in phase four, I feel I'm finished. I just want to get on with life where I'm eating by intuition, listening to my body not controlling, not thinking about what I eat, just totally being intuitive. I feel like an apple, I have it. If I feel like this, I have it. Not worrying about carbs and calories. So I'm really yearning to get to that place. But unfortunately, phase three is not the place to do it. Phase three, you're actually supposed to be strict. And so it's been really frustrating that I couldn't stay strict in phase three. And I've kind of just had to do, oh, I'm in normal life, just eat what you eat. And I wasn't ready for that psychologically. I was really looking forward to that. But it was going to happen after I'd finished phase three, done it for six weeks, really stabilized. And then I was going to move into normal life. So I feel like the whole thing's got a bit messed up. I don't really know the impact it's had on my weight because um, in the stress of it all, the scales got packed and I just I don't even know where they are. And, and a few days ago, they're somewhere in the car. We actually took them with us. We didn't pack. We didn't send them. We actually shipped a whole lot of stuff on a big truck up to Byron Bay and we put a lot of stuff at my parents house and then we took a bit of stuff with us in the car we thought we might need for the first week or so up there before our things arrive and the scales are somewhere there but I don't know where and I also got to the point where I just thought there's no point weighing myself because I'm just going to make myself stressed because I probably have stuffed up completely and my weight's probably gone up and who knows and I just don't need it right now there's too much else to stress about that's more urgent so I know my weight before I stopped looking at the scales was probably about six days into the crazy 10-day period and in those six days my weight did go up so the last time I looked at the scales I was about three or four pounds above my LIW which is a bit depressing but at the same time you know what given I've had no sleep I couldn't prepare any foods I've just had to eat what I could when I could and now we're on the road you know I'm having to buy food in cafes and diners and things on the road I mean <sighs> I'm doing my best you know I can only do what I can do and I'm still making good choices I'm making the best choices I can at any moment um you know like during the crazy packing period when I was really hungry you know I would just boil up a couple hard boiled, e boiled eggs and quickly eat them or quickly eat a tin of tuna or quickly grab a handful of nuts or grab a couple pieces of celery and most of the time I was sticking to that very low carb but sometimes I was eating very high calorie, low carb, like as I said, grabbing handfuls of nuts. Um, I didn't have time to make chocolate delight and I was really tired because I was burning out all my adrenal glands by staying up so late and pushing myself past the point of exhaustion. And I don't drink coffee so I couldn't sort of stimulate myself with coffee and I actually turned to the equivalent of coffee which is chocolate and I bought some 85% lint which is the lowest carb chocolate you can possibly get. It's basically a pure cocoa powder. And I ate a bit of that if I was really exhausted and just had to get something to give me energy, which is terrible for your adrenal system to stimulate yourself when you're that exhausted because you just start running on adrenaline and running on the sugar and it just burns you out. So you end up even more tired the next day. And I know this and I don't normally do it for that reason, but I felt I had no choice because I just had to somehow keep going. I try and grab a 10 minute nap and then I'll grab a piece of chocolate. 
So, you know, I was eating a lot of 85% lint and nuts and things like that that are low carb, but they're very high in calories. And I think that's why my weight started to creep up. And in the car on the road, you know, you stop at a petrol station, or in America you call them gas stations, what are you going to buy to eat? I mean, I do, do have a bag with some green apples and some nuts and some peanuts and some macadamia nuts in it, things like that, but they're almost gone now. There's only so much nuts you can eat in a day, and apples. <laughs> so, you know, I've had to go into places and buy food, and a couple of times I just, my boyfriend was eating a cookie, or he was eating a chocolate bar or something, and I, I said, oh, I'm just so tired, I just need to have a bite. So I'd have a couple of bites of his chocolate bar. I mean, it's just disgusting food I don't normally eat in my real life. And he doesn't normally eat that food either. I mean, never. But, you know, we're on the road. He's been driving for 10, 11, 12 hours. He's exhausted. There's no healthy options. And he just goes, all right, I'll just get some stimulants, which is sugar, you know, or junk food, which is a stimulant. Keeps you awake. So, you know, um, I'm kind of dreading getting on the scales when we get up there and I find my scales because I know there's going to be a hit on the scales, you know, and probably will be a couple pounds even higher. Maybe I'll be four or five pounds above my LIW, but you know what? My sister said something very interesting to me the other day. I was stressing about this when she was visiting me while I was packing, and I said, I can't believe I'm messing up my pet phase three. I mean, I've done so much work on HCG, and I'm messing it up. And I was having a bit of a meltdown. And I'm always a very positive person. As you know, I never get upset and stressed about stuff. But I was so tired. I hadn't slept for days. And I was so overwhelmed with how much I had to do. And it was like the last straw that my weight was going up. I was just, I just couldn't cope. And she said to me something really wise. She said to me, you know, any person in this situation that you're in with no sleep and no time to cook and running around like a crazy person with that level of stress, just eating whatever they can, any person would put on weight. Any person. A healthy person, a skinny person, a person who's never had a weight problem, like her, she's never had a weight problem, she said she would put on weight in this situation. She said it's nothing to do with phase three or messing up stabilization. She said it's just normal. And she said as soon as the situation's over and you've got time again and you can get some sleep and you can eat normal food and you can exercise, it'll drop back off. That's what happens with normal people. And she said to me, you've done so much HCG that your body is now normal. You have a normal metabolism. You're not that old fat person who puts weight on really easily and can't lose it again. She said, you're a normal person now with a normal healthy metabolism. So just trust that you're going through this stressful period. You might gain a few pounds. It's okay. As soon as the stressful period's over, they'll drop off again, just like any other normal healthy person. And I went, oh, that's true. I forgot that. Because, you know, even when you finish HCG, you still think of yourself as that old fat person who had the bad metabolism and couldn't metabolize foods and put on weight easily and couldn't lose weight easily. You forget that you're not that person anymore. And it's added to the fact that I am still technically in phase three and you are officially supposed to stabilize and be very strict and be very careful and stable in what you eat. So, you know, I had that running through my head as well, but I'm messing up the, the protocol because I'm not following the rules. But I've decided that I'm going to take on what my sister said, because as you guys know, I really have learned in my life that what you believe is what creates your reality. So if I keep running the belief that it's critical to stabilize and you have to be perfect in those three weeks and if you don't you bugger it up and you put the weight all back on and you have to do another round of HCG later and it's really critical to stabilize properly. If I hold that belief, look what it does to my energy field, look how much stress I'm carrying in my body, look how much cortisol I'm running in my body, it's probably going to create weight gain, you know, my body's probably going to panic. But if I run the belief that my sister told me, which is, any normal person in this situation would gain weight. You're a healthy, normal person now. As soon as you get back to normal life, you can eat normally and sleep and exercise. You'll lose it back again very easily. You'll normalize. Your weight will end up stable, just like any normal person. It doesn't matter that it's P3, P3, P4. You're a healthy person now. Then feel how much calmer I am. My stress levels are calmer. My body's probably in a state of trust. And so I've decided to choose that belief, the second belief. So since she said that to me, I haven't been stressing about it. You know, if I'm in the car, my boyfriend's eating a chocolate bar and I'm exhausted and I want to have a bite of it because I feel I need it, fine. Or if we're at a roadside diner and they're making me eggs and there happens to be some carbs accidentally in the meal or, you know, we go to a Thai food thing and we get some takeaway while we're driving and, you know, I'm not going to be obsessed about saying, please don't put any sugar in it. And I just eat what I can eat because we're on the road and, you know, that's the situation. And I am just sat, keep saying to myself, it's totally fine. As soon as I get there and unpack everything, get a few days rest, sleep, go for some walks on the beach, eat my normal raw food, healthy, healthy food, you know, enjoy the sun, be out there moving my body, it'll all normalize. And I really trust 
that. And I really agree with what my sister said. And it's time that I started to see myself as a normal, healthy person and let go of the years of panic and worrying about food because, you know, I'm now free of that prison. And that's the reason I did this whole HCG protocol journey because I wanted to end up at the end free from the prison of the diet mentality. And my choice now is to be free from the prison of the diet mentality. Just trust my body. It knows what to do. When I get back to normal situation, I'll eat normally and exercise normally. And it will totally normalize itself. My weight will stabilize itself. And everything will be fine. And, you know, I'm now a normal, healthy person. And I'll let go of the diet mentality. So it was really good that she reminded me of that. Because I think in my anxiety and my stress and my lack of sleep, I'd forgotten that. I was going back to my old habit of, oh, I've got to watch what I eat. No, I'm going to ruin it all. So thank you to my beautiful sister for saying that because it was like a big slap, you know. It's like someone throwing water on my face and I went, whoa, she's right. I'm a slim person now. I don't have to worry about food. Just trust my body, eat healthily, go for some walks when I get there, and it'll all drop off. Anything I've gained in this stressful couple of weeks. So that's where I'm at. Can't report my weight because I don't know my scales. No idea what's going on. But we're on the road. We're actually on our last leg of the journey. This is our last drive today. So by tonight, we're going to be in our new house, in our new home. I'm so excited. I wanted to make this vlog while I'm on the road to tell you the whole stressful thing. Because once I get up there, I don't want to think about that anymore. It's behind me. It's the past. It's gone. From the second we arrive there, I'm in my new life. From then, everything's positive and healthy. And all the stress from Melbourne and from the pack and the goodbye and all left behind it on the road. That's why I've gotten up early to do this vlog now, because I don't want to talk about this after tonight. I'm just going to be in my new space, in my new life, looking forwards, not looking back, being positive. So I'll do a vlog once we get there in a few days, once we've unpacked and settled in a bit, to show you my new life, show you the foods I'm eating, report how my weight is settling back down, everything's normalising, because I know that that's going to be the case. So to reassure you as well that that is possible, that you can have a stressful period and mess it all up and it all settles back down again. So just trust yourself and trust your body. So I'll let you know how that goes over the next few days. So I'm sorry I have been so out of touch. I haven't been doing anything on my fitness pal or vlogs or anything for about the last two weeks because of all this. So I will catch up when I have some time because I really want to see how you're all going. But I really want to thank you all for your support. It's been really, really heartfelt and it really warms my heart. And I have checked from time to time to see your comments and it's really helped me going help me keep going through this crazy period so anyway thank you all next time i see you i'll be much more rested and awake and have much more energy and i hopefully will be feeling very warm in the sun all right guys see you soon bye